click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, so in this video we are going to learn about what is going to be the resultant motion of an electron that is injected parallel to the magnetic field or perpendicular to the magnetic field. So these are two cases that will be studying separately. So in the first case, if the electron is injected exactly parallel to the magnetic field, that means in the direction of the magnetic field, either in the direction of the magnetic field or opposite to the direction of the magnetic field, this is how we can represent it. We have the magnetic field in this particular region and the magnetic field and the direction of the magnetic field is inside the plane of the paper. So I am injecting an electron also in this particular direction. Now what will happen? What will be the angle between the velocity of the electron and that between B? That particular angle, so I am considering the case A, so that angle is going to be equal to 0. Now since that angle is equal to be 0, from the basic equation of the force which is equal to Q into V cross B, this expression F will be equal to 0 because sine of 0 is equal to 0. That is no force will be acting on the electron whenever it is injected in the direction of the magnetic field. Now let us consider the case B. Whenever theta is equal to 90, that means it is injected in a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field. So we are going to study this particular case and we'll be deriving some equations based on it. So whenever your theta is going to be equal to 90, the resultant magnetic force is going to be equal to QV cross B, that is QVB sine theta. Sine of theta, that is sine of 90, is going to be equal to 1 and therefore this is going to be equal to QV into B. Now what is going to happen because of this force? This force, as you know, is going to act perpendicular to the plane that contains the velocity and the magnetic field. And therefore, the direction of this force is going to be this way. And thus, at each particular point, the magnetic force will be unable to change the magnitude of the velocity, but it is going to change the direction of the velocity. And due to this, if given a chance and if the magnetic field is spread out in quite a substantial area, then in this case the electron will get an opportunity to complete its path, a circular path over here. So since it is rotating in a circular path due to the action of the magnetic force, it will so happen that there will be a centripetal force that is incident or other that is acting on the electron and that is going to be balanced by the centripetal force is actually going to balanced by this particular force that is going to be equal to m into vc square upon r. So this is going to be your velocity once again there is m into vc square so this velocity is of course the same as this velocity out over here and therefore the radius of this path which it is going to trace out is going to be equal to m into vc square divided by q into vc into b and therefore this is going to cancel out over here and this is going to be m into vc divided by q b. So that is going to be the radius of the path. I mean to say the radius of this particular circular path. So your t is equal to 2 pi upon Vc into M into Vc upon Qb. Thus your time period is going to be equal to 2 pi M upon Q into B. So this is an expression for the time period. The expression for the frequency is equal to 1 upon T which is equal to Qb upon 2 pi m. So we have obtained the expression for the frequency and also 
for the time period. Sincere thanks students for watching this particular video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and do subscribe to Ikeda. Thanks a lot.